Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this installment of Through the Ages, we're going to travel back to 1999, and specifically the evolution of the Mongols, between how they were originally designed and how they've changed up until today. So far, I've been doing videos in the series mostly with pairs of civilizations, though Mongols are going to get the entire focus of this video. As while it depends a bit on how you count them, it may surprise you to learn that Mongols actually have the second most changes of the original 13 civilizations. Now that's not to suggest they've been radically redesigned, but simply that the Mangadai has proved to be a very difficult unit to get just right, being the target of a lot of tinkering over the years. In fact, of the Mongols' 18 distinct changes since 1999, more than half of them apply to the Mangadai specifically. Before we get to all of those changes though, let's set the scene of what Mongols look like at release. To start with, their bonuses were basically identical to today. Their cavalry archers fired faster, their light cavalry line had 30% more HP, hunters worked 50% faster, and their scouts had greater line of sight as a team bonus. So like I said, basically what they are now. As I foreshadowed already though, it's the manga die that look quite different. Originally, they attacked faster, had greater accuracy, were trained faster, and had a frame delay of 10 for non-elite and 0 for elite. In case you're not familiar with the term frame delay, I'll just briefly explain what it is, as it comes up a few times and is critical to understanding why Mangadai have their legendary reputation. Simply put, it's a measure of the delay between when you set a target and when your unit fires, which is completely independent from their usual firing rate or reload time, as it's often called. Frame delay is like a real-time version of first strike, or you could even think of it as your unit's reflexes. Here I have the game paused with an elite Mangadai and a heavy cavalry archer, and if I set them both to attack a unit, when I unpause, notice that they don't fire at the same time. The Mangadai fires first, and is in fact so quick on the draw that the projectile is halfway to the target before the animation is caught up to show the Mangadai is firing. The crazy part is this undersells how quick they were on the draw originally, as back in the day they responded even faster than they are in the version of the game I'm showing. Early on, players quickly realized this made the Mangadai much better than the regular Cavalry Archer, as you could kite basically anything without taking any damage whatsoever. Cavalry Archers, on the other hand, had to stay a healthy distance ahead of what you're fighting to accommodate that dead time between telling them to attack and when they actually fired. Their approach to the Mangadai's frame delay, as well as an anti-siege bonus, set them up for the next 20 odd years as indisputably one of, if not the best, unique unit in the game, at least at skill levels where players were able to take advantage of the easy micro. That was kind of a long explanation, but it is hard to overstate how critical just that small timing difference makes for the unit. Interestingly, according to one source who was a beta tester, Mongols originally fired 50% faster instead of 25% faster before release. If that's the case, Mongol Cavalry Archers were actually pretty crazy good at one point, and that bonus also of course would have applied to the Manga Dai, and would have made them even more bonkers. Even in their slightly toned down state at release, Sandy Peterson, the legendary designer on Age of Kings and the Conqueror's expansion, suggested shortly after release that in the first expansion they intended to tone down the Manga Dai. In other comments though, it seems Peterson attributed a lot of the Mongol strength to their hunting bonus, and how quickly it allowed players to advance. Now, I do want to take a quick detour here though, and briefly talk about the Cavalry Archer in Age of Kings. I don't want to get myself in trouble here, but I would contend that the Cavalry Archer at release was notably underpowered. Consider they're now cheaper, have one more range, up to 20 more HP, fire up to 11% faster with much greater accuracy, and that some civilizations get them with more armor and a larger bonus against spearmen. Despite all of these improvements over time, outside of a few civilizations with strong bonuses, Cavalry Archers really don't dominate the meta. Armies of knights and crossbows, and arguably even camels or elite skirmishers, can often reasonably handle generic cavalry archers, even after all their buffs. So why were they so underpowered at release? My hypothesis is because of the chariot archer. The chariot archer was arguably broken, especially for Assyrians who fired 67% faster in Age of Empires original release than generic chariot archers. I don't know enough about the Age of Empires 1 meta to say if it's still overpowered in Definitive Edition, but a Chariot Archer spam I know is considered a very difficult strategy to counter. They have no gold cost, great value, lots of mobility, and the same range as Foot Archers, which is not true for the Age of Empires 2 counterpart. Sandy Peterson directly acknowledged that Cavalry Archers were much weaker in H2 than Chariot Archers, and I personally suspect that Chariot Archers being too strong was a major factor in the balance we ultimately got for AoE2's Cavalry Archers. The punchline here is the Mangadai is basically the Cavalry Archer, but without frame delay and a small bonus against Siege. Yet with just those changes, it's sometimes called a cheat unit, and is arguably the best unit in the game. That's how close the Cavalry Archer was to being overpowered, so in my opinion the devs were smart to be cautious with them in the early days. 
Bringing things back to the Mongols though, the first big wave of changes came in 2000, with of course the Conqueror's expansion. This is where the unique tech drill was introduced and Mangadai received an overhaul, with plus one against spearmen, a slower firing rate, lower accuracy, a modest speed increase, and a longer training time, which was probably the biggest nerf in practice. Indirectly and easy to overlook is elite skirmishers also gained an extra plus two damage against cavalry archers, giving them a total of plus six against Mangadai and the halberdier was introduced as well. Despite seeming to receive a lot of nerfs though, I'd argue the Mangadai in the Conqueror's expansion actually got better. The expansion brought Bloodlines, Thumbring, and Parthian Tactics, all three of which are now considered important upgrades for the unit, though admittedly also make it relatively expensive to tech into. The Hazar was also added, which played into the Mongols' extra HP bonus for that unit, and overall this is how the civilization remained between 2000 and 2013. When asked, Sandy Peterson gave the opinion a couple of times that Mongols had the best cavalry archers, even better than the Huns. On an equal numbers basis, that's absolutely true, and it's a little ambiguous if we're including the Manga Dai here, though I think many players would agree the meta settled with Huns as the best cavalry archer civ in the game, at least prior to the new expansions where their discount was reduced. In fact, the Mongols have always largely been defined by a strong scout rush, and then Manga Dai and Siege in the late game, rather than regular cavalry archers, which have never been a common unit choice for them. In 2013, for example, an AoE zone poll put Mongols right up with the Huns and Magyars for the best scout rush in the game, and in a Reddit thread about the best unique unit in the game seven years ago, the overwhelmingly popular opinion was the Mangadai, and in fact the top comment said they were the best archer, mounted, and even best infantry unique unit, which gives you a sense of the status and reputation Mangadai carried. For early adopters of the Forgotten Empire's expansion in 2013, they gained the Mongols' new Castle Age unique tech Nomads. They still have this unique tech, and essentially houses would continue to add population space even if they were destroyed. It's a situational tech, but I think the idea was Mongols were already quite strong, and the Castle Age unique techs were used to bring up weaker civs. A more dramatic change was that the Mangadai's attack bonus against Siege was reduced to just plus one, and compensated with a specific bonus against Rams. The generic cavalry archer then had its gold cost dropped, making the regular cavalry archer line a bit more competitive with the Mangadai, which was losing some of its edge. The non-elite Mangadai then had its frame delay dropped from 10 to 5, which remember has the effect of making them easier to micro, though still not quite as good as the elite Mangadai's zero frame delay. Finally, the elite cannon galleon was also removed from the tech tree. Altogether, this was obviously trying to tackle the Mangadai's perceived imbalance, though arguably had the effect of making the unit feel more generic and less interesting. Maybe that's why in 2015's African Kingdoms, they undid a bit of that work. In that, the elite Mangadai's frame delay was increased to five, which is why I said the initial demonstration was underselling, as that's after this change was made. To compensate for that nerf, their attack bonus against Rams and other siege was reverted to the original staggered bonus against all siege units. Mongols were also given arrow slits briefly, but that was later removed as towers weren't really their intended strength. The tech nomads was also made a little more expensive by adding a gold cost. The consensus after these changes, as far as I can tell, is that the Elite Mangadai was still the best unique unit, but not as bonkers to micro. Arguably, their biggest changes were yet to come though, in 2019's Definitive Edition. In that, the first major patch nerfed the Hunter work speed bonus from plus 50% to plus 40, giving one and a half less food per villager per minute, while still being obviously very strong. They also gained access to the Step Lancer, which even benefits from the Mongols' plus 30% HP on light cavalry. This is on top of having camels, which is a lot of flexibility for their stable, especially for what isn't technically a cavalry civilization. In another example of a Mongols trend of having nice things but then having them quickly taken away, they were temporarily given supplies for their swordsman line, but that was later removed. Most recently in 2021, the Mangadai's speed was reduced by 3.5% to the same as the cavalry archer, and the generic cavalry archer's attack delay was brought down by 12%, making those units a bit more similar. As it stands today, they currently rank on 1v1 open maps around the 7th best, carried a lot by fast uptimes, and are considered a very strong Arabia civilization, as they have since the very early days. On closed maps, they rank pretty average, which isn't unexpected from a civilization that leans on early aggression and raiding, though their siege is also quite strong, and something we haven't really touched on. In fact, arguably part of what makes the Mangadai so strong isn't just the unit itself, but how well it's complemented by Hazars and a large variety of faster moving siege. So overall, my feeling is despite having the second greatest number of changes out of the original 13 civs, Mongols feel remarkably similar, and even through all of its tweaks, the Mangadai is still an all-star unit.
Personally, I'm glad they ended up keeping the anti-siege bonus, as it gives them a fun quirk that's different from the regular cavalry archer line and challenges players to come up with a creative way to counter it. The Hazar missing the last armor upgrade, but having it replaced with more HP is actually another fun quirk of the Sith, making them actually worse against archers, but better in melee. It feels like there's a lot of depth to what are deceptively simple bonuses on paper. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.